What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by once again. This is Arca coming at you with a CMRX, raw price action and statistical threat of analysis. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video with a friend so that you and them can join our cab. Details in the description below. With that said, let's begin. Okay, so some key takeaways here, you guys. Uh, we are in a descending channel. Usually these channels present or signal a trend reversal of sorts, right? So uh, another thing to notice here is that we do have a few touches of the resistance, uh, which can likely be the reason why we're looking so bullish in this area right here. Another key takeaway is, is uh, this massive gap that we have right above us, you guys. This is... Uh, this is a psychological component, uh, 100%. I mean, this is over a dollar gap. So this is a huge resistance range for us to, uh, for us to consider uh, for the coming days and weeks for CMRX stock. Okay, so there could be a potential confusion as to as to how many times we're actually testing the resistance of this channel. Now, if you're uh, an existing uh, member of the RCAB or you are a, you are a, a new viewer, please actually listen to this. I talk about this often. Uh, the golden rule of three would actually be three tests of the resistance before uh, an accumulation period or a consolidation period, if you will, before an attempt on the fourth try to actually break out for a true breakout. Um, why I'm saying that there could be a possible confusion is because this... Uh, some people may not be looking at it as a test, so that so in a daily chart we're looking at one test, two tests, and three tests. So we're actually not seeing we're, we actually wouldn't see a true breakout just yet. And if we did, it would likely be resisted by a relevant resistance and uh, followed by a capitulation or some type of accumulation event before a true breakout. Now. Uh, by noticing that, I actually looked at other time frames so that we can be able to validate whether we're trading this channel in a daily chart or we're trading it within within a more immediate short term time frame. So what I did find was a bit interesting in looking at the four hour chart. So at the four hour chart, we're looking at test number one, two and three, followed by the capitulation and a huge consolidation event right here. Right, you guys. So we are getting close to wanting to test that uh, that fourth test and true breakout. Uh, not to mention that this is actually printing a little bit of a bull flag right here. And that could also be a signal for us to for us to look uh, towards the upside. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next chart for CMRX. Okay, you guys, so uh, a couple things here for you guys to notice. Let me just get rid of the SMAs and, just for now. So these... Uh, these green bars are actually just drawn by me just so that I can be able to see how the trend has been moving within the decline of this channel. The dis I'm sorry, the descent of this channel. Um, and this circled area right here is a very similar iteration that is currently happening right now. Now, this understandable since it is only the second test of the channel, it would be a sort of a fake out and uh, trap longs into thinking that we're actually breaking out and continue on to the upside. So these are things to, to definitely look out for in several time frames so that we can be able to gauge uh, entry better. Now, um, I also have drawn a Fibonacci retracement here for us to review. We are currently, the price action has stopped uh, right at the golden zone. So... Uh, the golden zone is between the the not 382 and the not 618 Fibonacci ratios. Now this is actually after a pump to the upside, facing rejection at this uh, one fib at 195 before uh, before testing this support, which is also, I mean all of these all of these candles right here are also uh, confluent with the not 382 at 175 and within the golden zone. So this is this is looking pretty good for CMRX at least in the sh at least in the in the shorter time frames in the smaller time frames, right? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the notes here to just make sure that we are within the right path. Uh, let's see ta da ta da ta da. Okay. So, uh 
if we were to if we were to move on to the upside from here, you guys. Um, I mean, first of all, we're facing some catalysts. We're looking at the Fed meet on Wednesday. We're looking at jobs report on Friday. Uh, some very important metrics also next week coming up. So a lot of this price action could be dependent on those uh, catalysts. So we are looking at a, a bullish setup here, which could indicate that the markets may actually rally into the Fed report on Wednesday, which is typical for the markets to do. Um, it's typical for us to run into it. And then on bear news, it, you know, we trap the longs and gain that liquidity for the short positions or long put positions. So if we were to move up to the upside continuation, we're looking at a true breakout, uh, likely, likely to test, uh, likely to test the possibly the one spot 272 or the one spot 618 at 214 before reversing and continuing on to testing our newly converted resistance in uh, resistance into support excuse me uh, now let's take a look at some uh, simple moving averages right here uh, we can see that we uh, let me just go ahead and get a uh, get close to this right here so we are now trading above the 10-day simple moving average and if i'm not mistaken we are also trading above the seven-day exponential moving average because it's uh, obviously that close so it would yep we're actually trading right above it and you can see that we have also used the the, the yellow line is actually the seven day exponential and the green line is the 10 day, uh, the 10 day is simple moving average. So you can see that we're actually using it as support uh, to the upside. Now, this is the 50 day simple moving average. And you can see that we use that we're that we're using it as a form of resistance right now. So if we can if we can gain some traction, it would actually be from a two potential zones here. Uh, it could be the 382 at 175, which is also the range low from these areas right here, and the the not 236 at 171, you guys. So this not 236 could be more of a wick down before a recovery, before an immediate recovery. I believe Wyckoff uh, Wyckoff theory calls that uh, terminal shakeout or a spring of sorts, right? So we uh, we would then start our ascent to the upside. Uh, now, a couple things to note within this chart as well. The one spot 618 that I'm talking about at $2.14 has uh, confluence with our 200-day moving average. So this this is likely an area for us to be able to come up and, and then uh, reject before testing the, the newly converted support. Uh, so that's that's something for you guys to look out for, you guys. But I'm still, I'm still very bullish on this... Uh, on CMRX is looking, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to the next chart. Uh, we have uh, the statistical side of uh, of the trade here. So every iteration here has been noted by me by hand. It's actually not done yet. You can see back here that I've I've actually taken more metrics. So all the way to the beginning of trading of of the CMRX asset, which would have been uh, about let's see, uh, April eleventh, twenty thirteen. Um, I will explain to you what metrics those are and why I took them. So uh, you're looking at, let me just make this a little bigger. We are looking at volatility here. Uh, volatility represented by this indicator BBWP. Um, when we reach fully contracted levels around here and then another one near this area, that usually indicates uh, a high probability of large volatility coming in. And uh, inversely, the same as being fully expanded to these top levels right here. Now, volatility is direction neutral. So uh, only because this is suggesting upside doesn't mean we're going to necessarily go to the upside. In order for us to gain that bias in direction, we pair this with a uh, momentum oscillator, such as the stochastics momentum. So in this, in this particular instance, or all of these iterations, are noted from us going below the critical level, uh, which on an eight-hour chart I consider to be below the 10%. Uh, these would be critical ex uh, contractive levels. So I've taken every single iteration from when we have uh, reached those lows and uh, compared which ones were successfully guessed to the upside versus not, and also how much of an upside thrust we faced 
and the duration of the iteration. So with that said, we're looking at a total of 83 iterations. We, uh, we have 67 that are correct and 16 that are incorrect of guessing the upside. That puts us at an average upside accuracy of 80 spot 72% with an average upside thrust of 70, uh, a 17 spot 90%. And the average duration is actually a back test that failed, which I'm still working on, you guys. We are definitely going to look at this. But it is the eight-hour time frame, and this could be almost I don't want to, it's hard for me to say this, but it could be immediately, uh, immediately for me would be the next trading session to to maybe two or three, right? So if we take our averaged upside thrust of 17 spot 90% and apply it to where we currently sit, we get some very interesting results. So we are at a dollar 80 and this could be potentially a jumped to two dollars and 12 cents, which is very confluent with our one spot 618 golden ratio. This is usually where we like to take the trade as humans. Now, another cool thing is, is that we are in uh, a, a reversal formation. This is a falling wedge and we have broken out of it. And now we are testing the support and it looks like we that test could have been a good thing. So, <laughs> the, we also have a price objective to look at. So we can take a trend line, right? And we take that trend line and draw it from here to the lo- from the hypotenuse to the lowest point of the triangle, which would be this, uh, uh, according to this descending area here, it would be right down here. So you can see that that's, that's how I took it, right? You can see that trend line right there. And we apply it to the point of breakout. So the point of breakout looks like it was this candle right here. So we apply it to the resist to the newly converted resistance into support and gauge a price objective. Now the price objective is suggesting, uh, a, let's see, two dollars and five cents, which has some confluence with the one spot two seven two, but it's particular to being in between the one spot six one eight and the one spot two seven two. If we are already making price action reach these areas, we can expect or we can likely see a wick to the upside to test the one spot six eight the one spot six one eight and you know to come back and likely test some type of uh uh, support right here now the one spot two seven two has uh has confluence directly with the wedge top right here so you can see the trend line uh, this dotted line that i'm that i'm that i have the cursor line uh you can see that it's indirect confluence with this candle this candle we've used it as support right here with this one right here uh so this is a this is a relevant area you guys so uh definitely something to look out for within having this suggestion we can actually take a box of uh a box for us to see a a zone of resistance if you will so we can actually take it like this and now we have this zone as a potential take profit zone Right. If we're going to do a long trade now, if we do, uh, if, we, you know, I have the I have the line drawn right here for the upside thrust of 17.90. And you can see that that line has been uh, used very much often. You can see these candles here are using it as support, support, uh, support over here. I mean, it's almost perfect the way it's using it. Right, you guys. So uh, but please understand that these uh, metrics are statistical metrics right over here. These candles closing uh, and opening right at the at the line as well. Yeah, guys, this, this could be a point of inflection. Uh, it could be a key resistance. This point right here. So this area could be a very important space for us to be able to look at taking profits and or waiting for confirmation above the 214 zone and then start testing this uh, the, the newly converted resistance into support before a continuing to, a continuation to the upside you guys so uh, I please remember one thing you guys I am not a financial advisor I can't actually suggest for you to sell or buy any asset please take whatever I do show in these videos as a form of entertainment do your own DD and we'll be okay right um and yeah you guys so this is this is looking promising for for uh for cmrx and now if i were to suggest any type of entry uh uh discretionary would be the only way that i can tell you here you guys because uh 
we have already tested this and these are eight hour candles. So that's a, those are significant tests to confirm that we are definitely breaking out of this wedge. So if we were to face some downside, we're going to, we're actually going to gauge a direction, a uh, bias and direction with some RSI right now. Uh, if we were to face some immediate short term downside, we can look at a test of 175 and uh, look at entry between 171 and 175 uh, before making uh, the impulsive move to the upside and looking at profit taking at around these areas right here. So uh, the reason why I'm suggesting here is potentially because uh, we could face some downside and we can actually verify a better entry for then a further upside move. Uh, no no uh, diamond hands on this, you guys. Um, uh, definitely not worth holding, uh, right? So th this is... Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not following the the fundamentals of the company. I don't know it. So if you do believe in the company, that's great, you guys. This this is uh we're at price discovery lows right here. So there's actually no um uh, the lows of this uh asset could be at around 127. So it is making a structure of higher highs right now. So this could be a bullish setup for CMRX for the long run. Uh, so please practice with risk management, use stop losses. And, uh, you know, those are there for, for our survival for a next day of trading. Let's move on to the RSI, you guys, some very good stuff right here. The 12 hour RSI has three drives of phantom bullish divergence, which you can see here. These are the three that are aligned with these three. Uh, I drew these uh, myself and we have three drives of regular bullish divergence as well. So that's why I'm telling you, you guys, that entry could be uh, around now-ish. You know, th that range that I just showed you could be that area for us to be able to go in and uh, and make a, a long position. We can be long this stock to 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 make 17 to uh, uh, 17 to 20 percent gains, you guys. So uh yeah we're, we're looking at upside within this within this asset you guys so let's look at the uh multi-pane uh rsi right here just to gauge a better bias in uh in direction starting from the immediate short term right let me just go ahead and make these a little larger just a sec okay let's start with a 30 minute rsi uh New new viewers, please listen up. This is a regular RSI. I have split the RSI into two sections, the upper half being the bullish control zone and the bottom half being the bearish control zone. Both of the zones are split in half too. The bottom half of the bearish is the bear strength percentile. The upper half is the bear weakness percentile. This is bull weakness percentile and this is bull strength percentile. The rest of the RSI works just the same, you guys. Anything above 70 overbought, anything below 30%. Uh, oversold. So uh, the 30 minute time frame is not giving us any bias and direction. In fact, we are in the shallow areas of the bull weakness, which which could mean that we can likely face some sideways action for now. Uh, let's look at a more immediate short term. Let's look at 15. This is a, more of a micro time frame. As you can see that we are also not looking at a, it's not giving us a bias in direction. This is likely to the catalysts that are coming in for the Fed and jobs and stuff, you guys. Uh, the, the markets will be at a, at, a, at a pause like this for a while. Let's go up and look at the six hour to see what it's suggesting. Uh, six hour has jumped into the bullish control zone. We are still within the shallow areas of the, of the bull weakness percentile, which means that we can likely be gravitated to, uh, to the bear uh, weakness percentile as well uh let's look at the four hour and see what it's got for us uh j just like this you guys so when we're in the when we're in the shallow areas of the bull or the bear weakness percentiles uh we can be gravitated in and out of each other to continue on this sideways action right you guys uh now let's look at the eight hour time frame to see what we got uh eight hour time frame is also doing the same deal as the as the six hour right here, you guys. So uh, let's we already looked at the 12 hours. So let's move on to the daily. So the daily is suggesting otherwise, you guys. So the daily is suggesting uh, continuation to the upside. The RSI signal line is now within the shallow areas of the bear weakness percentile. So this is likely to jump into uh, bull weakness. The moving average is now making a curve and is moving outside of the bear strength percentile into, into bear weakness. So there could be a session or, uh, I mean, since we're looking at a daily, we could, fa we could face some some... 
some sideways trading right here, you guys, before we can see an upside potentially mid session to the end of uh, to the end of tomorrow, uh, potentially upside starting on Tuesday. So they, this can give you time to be able to think of those long positions. But uh, with that said, you guys, I'm actually going to leave the video off right here. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to join me on uh, in Discord. Join our cab. And uh, also in Twitter, you can visit me there too. You can ask me questions here on the comments below. Um, and and yeah, we can always further discuss you guys. But if, uh, let's see, see. Yeah, that's all I got to say. I'll catch you at the bell, you guys. Adios.